your source for all things Texas Tech. This is the Ask Level Podcast from Double T 97.3. Hey, what's happening? Welcome into Ask Level, the podcast, episode number 19. We've been doing this for a good, good amount of time so far as we've uh, reached a new year alongside Chris Level. I'm Choice Woodman. Level, we, uh, we got to experience a bowl game. We've entered conference play for basketball, and, well, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, too, man, 2023. Good thing none of us uh, have to write actual checks anymore because <laughs> I was used to screw that screw that up. Wait, you don't write any checks? Up. Well, I mean, it just seems like everything's, you know, like automated bill pay or you're using your, I'm, your whatever I'm, car. I'm pretty old-fashioned. Or... I think I still write probably well, heck, not, not two many or three people... checks a month. Okay, yeah, not many people even take checks anymore, but uh, yeah, but happy, uh, yeah, happy New Year uh, to everybody out there. Boy, it, yeah, it, it it finished with a a doozy with that uh, that trip to Houston. That <laughs> was, was uh, yeah, that that was awesome. I think that will pay uh, some big time dividends uh, all off season because that uh, that was quite a night. Uh man, I I you know this is my first go around, uh, kind of being more in an official capacity. These are all like this, right? All the seasons, because this was a blast. Finishing uh, four four game winning streak, and you know, uh, winning the bowl game, doing it against an SEC foe, winning two games against uh, teams you really care about, beating OU and UT. This, I mean, to be quite honest, level. You, I look back in my own tech fandom. It's been a long, long time since I've gotten to enjoy a season quite like this one. And I think there's a lot of Red Raider fans that feel the same. Well, and you just forget uh, how how long seasons are. Yeah. Because, you know, that they are a journey from beginning to end, and there's lots of ebb and flow because there's just no way that you're making these comments to me or thinking you're making these comments to me Mm-hmm. back when you're sitting there at four and five no <laughs> yeah you just all. don't you, you know uh when you're like man i don't know if we can get bowl eligible it's you're gonna have to hurry uh you know this is gonna be really difficult which ones can you get and you know anyway from that point on you you want them all uh but yeah that that's that that's the part that is i think been been so rare is that you were finally one of those teams that was not fun to play at the tail end you improved as the year went along. Mm-hmm. You had to kind of reinvent yourself. Maybe it was because you got healthier at quarterback. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that it, it's it's a positive in that you just feel like you just got better and better uh, as, as the thing went along. And it's just been a long time since you've kind of felt like this when – You've had fast starts. The, the, those have been fairly common, actually. But sure, uh, the the fast finishes have just been, you know, n- n- not really been there. So this was uh this was a fast finish, and it was it was fun to be a part of because you just feel like, man, you just you ended on such a high note with everything, recruiting uh, on the field, facilities, coaches, contracts, all all, all the all the stuff, and it's like, man. Okay, if this is just the beginning, can we? Can I just see what the end looks like? But that's not how it works. Uh, I uh, we'll, we'll have to venture our way through what what it what it looks like from here. But boy, I, I can't wait to find out. Man, it, yeah, that, what a year one under Joey McGuire. It was it was a lot of fun, um, as you outlined all those all those different things and and moving in the right direction. But it, it just seems like you're doing things that you haven't done over the last decade or so. And those things being winning the close football games, protecting the home field so well, these are the, the things that add up to winning. I mean, think about all the close games in the last two regimes in the Cliff Kingsbury era and the Matt Wells era. You just couldn't get over the hump in those tight ones. And especially down the stretch this year, you just found a way, whether it was a, a low scoring game and aims or the, the shootout against OU, this team just, it just, there was a different feel to it for whatever reason. And I guess you chalk it up to culture. 
Yeah, I, I think uh, I think you chalk it up to culture and identity and and a coaching staff that was able to get a bunch of kids to just kind of buy into what they were preaching, yeah. and then really never wavered. The quarterbacks changed, uh, the mm-hmm. you know the 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 scheme at times on offense changed because of that. I think the offensive line changed quite a bit as the year went along, just because of injury and and, and some different uh, different things. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you just, you know, cause I mean, you just look back and really the only, that Baylor game was, was one that you, you know, kind of screwed that up and that, that was just five sure. turnovers, but I just, you know, the, the, the game versus Ole Miss though, mm-hmm. you clearly wanted it more. You played harder, you played smarter. Uh, I thought you scratched and clawed against a, a, a pretty good group of athletes, uh, because I think on paper, there was some concern. Hey, if this Ole Miss bunch is motivated and they play smart, I'm not sure we can we can hang because of their speed, athleticism. I mean, because th- those two running backs are about as good as you saw all year, and that includes yeah. Bijan and Kendra Miller and Deuce Vaughn and and all that stuff. But you you just were extremely. I don't know if 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 Ole Miss's offensive line was was as good as kind of had what you see what you had seen at some points this year. And the combinations in the in the Big Twelve maybe were a bit better because of the group up front, but still the fact that you bottled that situation up and that Tyler Shuck ends up being the leading rusher in that game yeah. is just wild uh, because it, it's it's not anything. If you're talking a recipe for 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 a win, mm-hmm. a recipe for success in that game, that's just not something you're either brave enough to to put on <laughs> paper or to even suggest because people would think like. Who's this idiot? Right. You know, I like yeah. suggesting that, but uh, it, it was just a very, very rewarding game to win. And it was one that you could really sink your teeth into. And I, what I mean by that is, you know, you, you did it though is the way you did it uh, such a, you know, because you kind of got a redo. And what I mean by that is I go back to that Baylor game, you know, that's a Saturday night. Patrick Mahomes is here. There's a big mm-hmm. ceremony. It's sold out. And you really kind of felt like, okay, we've built to this crescendo. And th- this is where you this program under this new coach kind of starts knocking on the door a little bit and you start getting some relevance nationally. Right. And it just it just went poorly that mm-hmm. night, as we know. But in, in a huge because you will won those last three, you get yourself set up in a home game environment. And, and you have so many fans there. Uh, there were so many people that, that were in Houston, as you know, and the atmosphere was awesome. And you just you, – you wanted to take advantage of it, and you did. That's what I mean by kind of getting a, a redo because you kind of allowed yourself to build up to another crescendo. And uh, I, that's, the, that's twice I've said that word. I bet I haven't said that word in uh, the last <laughs> six months. Got music on uh, the brain? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. But you, you get what I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. I think that's yeah. a perfect word for it because, yeah. I mean, you, that's what it was. You, mm-hmm. It was the apex. You, you didn't finish. So many times we see teams peak too early or whatever you want to call it. They play good football at one time, but then at the end of the season – I mean, just compare it to the seven and five in the first year of Cliff Kingsbury. I mean, that, people were excited there, but you start off seven and zero oh against a lot lesser competition. Yeah, you man. played good competition down the stretch and still found a way to win four games at the end. You're beating an SEC West team for the second time in a in a row in a bowl game, and and you you bullied them. I mean, that that's what's great about it is you bullied that team that's supposed to be able to bully you. It's just fun. I mean, it, tech football feels fun again, and, and I think that's what's what, what so many fans are just loving about it, and and uh, what was so enjoyable about that game in Houston. Yeah, and and, and it ended up being you know just one of two two wins by Big Twelve teams in bowl games. You know, um, so you you certainly did your part, and it wasn't a fluke. You know, you you. I just I look at what Shuck did. I look at what Loic yeah, Fungi yeah. did. I look at what you know Jerron Bradley did, and you know uh, Tosh Brooks, and on and on it goes. And then just so many guys on defense that because the story there for Tim DeRuiter against Ole Miss was okay. I'm missing some depth. 
Sure. Uh, I, I, I've got not as much depth up front. I've got missing, you know, several pieces in the secondary. So I'm shuffling some things around, but we've also had this month to get ready for this game. And so some pieces like Duda Banks and Harvey Dyson, uh, Nate Floyd, you know, that you had Tyler Owens moves into a starting spot mm-hmm. and, and all those guys, just Isaac Smith kind of, you could see him start to emerge as the Miles was, Cole. And, yeah. Miles Cole hadn't yeah. played a ton all year. And, and I thought that's a credit to to Tim and, and coaching, just like it is with Zach Kitley on the offensive side, trying to figure out, okay, who's my quarterback this week? Let's, let's cater the offense to what they do well. Uh, it's tempo some week, it's QB run some week, it's just it's whatever, depending on who the, the signal caller was. And, and I thought in that game, there were some points where you really missed Donovan Smith too, just sure. because that component – the QB run component or just that extra skill player that could have grounded out, uh, you know, some, some yards, grinded out, grounded out, whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I, th- I thought he would have helped, especially with the way that we saw him use versus Oklahoma, but he was obviously not there. And, but you adapted and you, you adapted and, and made some things happen uh, on offense. Uh, so yeah, anyway, it's just a f- fun night. And, and the score could have been so much worse than, than what, have. than what it was. Yeah. And, and that's, again, I just go back to, and we've touched on this in this podcast in the space that you're just, you, you weren't super talented. You, you weren't at times very good, if that mm-hmm. makes sense, but yet you, you just figured out ways to do it. You're scoring 55 one week, 14 the next, um, you know, you, you, you adapted, you thrived and, and you just kind of figured out ways to do it, even though you weren't very fast, yeah. uh, especially on offense, you didn't have a, uh, a lot of uh, game breaker types and things like that. And so you kind of find your, your yourself in a situation versus Ole Miss where it's, you're getting in the red zone. And it's like, we can't quite, you know, can't quite uh, get, get it, get it in the end zone. So we may have to kick it, may have to go for it, may have to do yeah. some different things, but uh, man, it's just, it was just a fun night. And, and we haven't even touched on this really other than just brief, but I mean, it was that day that we find out that Joey, you know, had, uh, had, you know, agreed to a new contract. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and, and I think so it just, that's why I'm saying all these layers of, of the way a program is supposed to work. It just, it, it all fits. And that's the, that's the key word right there because you have the perfect fit running your program right now. He is the perfect fit. And so many times it's not about coaches or, or what they know, or even who they know, it's about fit. You could take somebody that's a phenomenal coach and knows a ton of football, a ton of, of – has a ton of recruiting ties, but you put them in the wrong spot yeah. geographically or with the administration or whatever, and it just doesn't, it doesn't jive, uh, and, and it just doesn't work. And this is the opposite of that. This is just a perfect fit for – what Texas Tech needs right now, and Joey's Joey, the, the skies, uh, uh, you know, we are on the way up from here. Yeah, I think that's that's a great point. I mean, we see that so many times in college football. The fit just matters so much. We've seen it a ton in Austin over and over. Shoot, it might be going on still in Austin as we speak, or might be going on in Norman. Don't know if Venables is the right fit there. He, fit just matters so much. Um, but I think the word you used earlier, rewarding, is what that bowl game was. It just felt rewarding for for Tech fans. So the bowl game, we get a big announcement after the bowl game. Tyler Shuck uh, says on the field that he is he's going to come back. Um, surprised by that? Uh, feelings no. on that at all? No, I'm not. I'm not surprised by it. I think uh, I, I I just wouldn't put all that to bed just yet. Uh, okay. with, with 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 everything. Um, sure. Sure. Uh, I, I think that is clearly his intent. And so mm-hmm. I don't want to, but I just, until, until he's here in the spring and in school gets started and all those things, because I do think that there's some, you know, cause Joey mentioned it after the game mm-hmm. about rumors of him getting an NFL combine you know, invite and yeah. things like that. That that's, that's big time stuff. Uh, having, you know, as we sit here and talk, I believe he's coming back. Make no mistake. I just right. think you have to be careful about talking in absolutes with some of this stuff because I do think that sure. at some point he is an NFL prospect. Mm-hmm. Whether that's now or later, I think that that's the only, you know, that's the only question. But if that is his intent, you know, because here's the thought process. 
he could be, he could, you know, leave school early right now and he could be a mid round pick Mm -hmm. or he could come back and be, and improve that to a first or second round pick. And I do believe that is absolutely possible based on what you kind of hear Mm -hmm. in NFL circles. Uh, And so that's kind of the, and, and it's tricky because here's how you have to think about it too. And, and I don't think this has been brought up a lot. The NFL draft is going to be somewhat void of quarterbacks because so many quarterbacks are choosing to come back to school and make money. Yeah. So you're missing a lot of those. I mean, Tyler Shuck is not Bryce Young. I mean, he's likely to be right. the number one guy. There, there's, there's an elite tier there, but he's kind of in the conversation for that next group. And whether that next group contains five or 20 guys, you know, that that's, that's up for debate. But what I'm saying is that, that, that group is not, there's not as many in that particular group as in years past, Mm -hmm. simply because, you know, Hey man, I'm going to go, you know, tap into some NIL money at a school, whether I transfer or stay where I'm at or, so you're not seeing the, the, the tweener types or the not sure things, uh, yeah, uh, declaring or leaving leaving school, they're they're coming back, and so that kind of makes it. So that's why I say he, he could be picked a lot higher than maybe people don't. You know, they're not thinking that way just because of there's not as much competition uh, in in the draft. You know, so who who knows? That, that's but that's up to, to 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 Tyler and his family and and what information he's got, which I'm not privy to, and then his mm-hmm. conversations with Joey and and all those things. And uh, because it, it does affect Texas tech football, because I think in some ways it directly affects Baron Morton too, possibly. So sure. whether that is right now or, or in the near future or, or not for a year from now, and in, in some ways it affects Baron Morton, but yeah, I was, yeah. And, and he's, you know, yeah, he just kind of stood up there on the stage and <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and that's why I say, I think he clearly, that, that is clearly his what intent. You, yeah. 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 So I think um, you're right, though. You can't speak in absolutes, especially in today's world. And yeah, there's there's still a lot of a lot to be learned, I guess, over the next uh, few weeks before anything's uh, anything solid. So before we move on to the bowl from the bowl game, someone did mention um, or here's a question from Shane. It says, level, is there any repercussions for Lane Kiffin for what he said about the tech player after the game. Uh, I appreciate Sh- Shane's question. He's got a good middle name. That's my middle name. Or he's got a good name. <laughs> I guess that's my, actually my middle name. Okay. So I, I've, I've grown to like, I guess, uh, embrace it more as I've gotten older. I didn't yeah. used to like it when I was a little kid, but um, that's just an, as a, an aside. Solid. No, th- there's no, uh, and, and I think if you go, if you go back and listen to what he said, it was kind of, uh, somewhat of a, of an accusation. Uh, I think he was, I think he was, here's what I think happened. I, I think that he was ultimately frustrated that, that the, there was the one play where two players of his got personal foul penalties yep. and that may, maybe, or maybe not was a mistake uh, in, in his mind. Um, I, I believe there was, you know, Dimitri Moore did get involved at some level with, with an Ole Miss player, uh, verbal altercation, whatever. I don't think that anybody spit on anybody, nor do I think there was uh, the thing suggested that, uh, that Lane Kiffin did, but there's no, there's no recourse. And I think that's why Texas Tech have felt the need to mm-hmm. address it and, and, you know, go on the record about it uh, really before, before we'd even landed back in, uh, in Lubbock, uh, early, yeah. early the next day. So it's just unfortunate. And, you know, we could get into the multiple targeting, uh, penalties. We could get into the, to the, whether there was some injuries that were, were real or weren't, uh, you could get into multiple, you know, stomps on, on a Texas tech player yeah. by their starting right tackle. You can get into all kinds of stuff, but, but see that this, fortunately, we can sit here and talk about what a great win it was and not have to look at officiating or Mm -hmm. this or that, uh, because that's, you know, that's what unfortunately folks that, that didn't, (laughs) didn't win the game, you know, are are all they're left with. And we've been, we've been there before, you know, we 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 know what that, we know what that's like. So, uh, but yeah, I, I, yeah, there's no, there's no recourse. 
There, and, you know, and Lane Kiffin's got a history of being loose, obviously. Um, there's some – look, go back and read some stuff on his time with the Raiders and, and stuff like that. I don't know. I just feel like – as a head coach, you have to be more responsible with your words, um, especially in today's climate. You, you can't just throw out accusations and that sort of thing. And and I don't know about your observation of him. I'll tell you from the, the sky view of what it looked like. It looked like when Lane Kiffin kind of and, – and it kind of coincided with that double penalty, the 30 yards worth of penalties – But when Lane Kiffin kind of realized that his team was not going to win the game or when it was getting out of hand is when he never left the side of an official the entire rest of the game. (laughs) He he was it was almost like making excuses for what was going on, but he was riding officials the entire rest of the game from that point on. So it was yeah, it is it is what it is. Yeah, he he's a he he's a a, a very very bright offensive mind. I mm-hmm. know people that uh, have worked with him before. Uh, they will tell you that they've learned more from him than anybody else they've worked with, and so that that is a real thing. Uh, and and the second thing is though is that that's a program and a and a head coach that lost, I believe, five of their last six games. I think lost four in a row and, and five he, six. Yeah. And he was rewarded with a nine million dollar a year brand new contract. <laughs> and yet, if you're Texas Tech, you you win your, your last four games and you're rewarded with a contract that pays you about four and a half million on average. Yeah. So it is just uh, it, it is interesting uh, to see the, <laughs> the the differences there. But I, I would not want to trade places with uh, an Ole Miss fan. I. Don't disagree with that. All right, so that's the good, all the the fun stuff of the bowl game. Shifting, we'll talk a little bit of basketball here before we wrap it up. But depending when you're listening to this, we've got a Kansas game fairly early in the week, so that may or may not have already happened. Um, We did see the opener with uh, TCU. Great start. Not a great finish. Uh, Texas Tech does a lot of good things in this game, but – uh, ultimately, there's there's quite a few things that end up biting you, like turnovers and missed free throws and things you just can't have happen in a Big 12 game, much less a road Big 12 game. So uh, thoughts on what you saw in Fort Worth? Well, you know, I, I, I TCU is one of the oldest teams in the league. Mm-hmm. I thought they did not play their best, yet they survived it. And I think that's a sign of a good team, unfortunately. Sure. I thought you played pretty well at times, maybe better than I thought you would have. And then you, and you still, it's not quite good enough because of some of the, the shortcomings that you have. And, you know, I, I know that, that Mark has told these kids everything they could expect about going through the gauntlet of the big 12 and how league play is different for those that, that have not experienced it, whether they are a, a freshman or, or a, a transfer And you can only tell them so much, you know, you can tell them here's how it's going to be. Here's what you can expect. You can talk to them, tell them, tell them, tell them, but until they kind of go through it and experience it and they haven't even really faced uh, an adverse crowd yet, just because that was largely like a neutral site game that was, uh, you know, half and half or or maybe even more from a tech fan base standpoint. So that's not even, it's just, it's called differently. Uh, you know, and it's, and, and there's different pressure. It just, it, it just is. So they will have to experience some of that. And now they're going to have to, to figure out now how to maneuver. Okay. we got to bury that one. we got to turn right around and, and, and get ready for the Jayhawks or otherwise we, we drop Oh, and two in the league before Oklahoma comes uh, to Lubbock uh, this weekend. And, and, you know, you look around the league and there was a couple of upsets that should give you pause because Iowa State hammers Baylor. Mm -hmm. Uh, Iowa State was an underdog and you, you know, you see Kansas State who was picked, I think, last in the league and they get, they get West Virginia in overtime. And so my my point of bringing those up, it just speaks to this league is deep. This league is, is brutal. There is no gimme. It does not exist. Any win that you get is to be celebrated but trying to defend that uh, that twenty nine game home, you know that home streak or whatever right. that that begins this week, and you know, and, and I thought, you know, look, 
Kevin O'Banner was kind of a non-factor. Daniel Baccio was mm-hmm. was very much under the weather, a game time decision. He ended up playing and played pretty well, although he didn't provide you with much offense. Right. Uh, I thought if, if anybody helps Davion Harmon and Pop Isaacs from just a scoring the ball standpoint or, or able to hit shots, I, I thought, you know, this is a game that you you can win, even, even with the turnovers and missed free throws. But right. there was just too many empty possessions in the second half where they're not even – TCU's not even doing a whole lot to cause those turnovers. You're just – yeah you're just kind of throwing it away. They're unforced errors and it was frustrating, but you know, Hey, look, <laughs> you, you miss a bunch of you, you go 50% at the stripe and, and you have 20 plus turnovers on the road. I don't care who you are or where you're playing. That's like, that's like the, the football equivalent of turning it over five times in a game. Right. It doesn't matter who it's against or where that game is at. Odds are not going to go, go well. And that, that will always hold true. Um, Plenty to build on from, plenty to be excited about, but th- that that has to get cleaned up. Uh, the turnover specifically, sure. The, f- the free throw thing is going to happen at times. You practice them as much as anybody. That's it, but it, it's just some nights they don't go in. But like your two oldest players going 0 for four at the free throw line on technical fouls, yeah, like that. That was really difficult to watch it just is. because those are your two older guys you, you're you were four for four on those being just just short mm-hmm. and it was just uh, and i and it's it's a bit tricky trying to shoot free throws with no, nobody man. there and, yeah. and i and i get that but uh but it's just that 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 was not that that right there specifically was not a good sign of of things to come yeah it was yeah it rough to say the least, uh, to watch it, it just kind of drip away and you felt like it was coming. And, and how many times have we seen Tech not play their best over the last handful of the seasons and find a way to win yeah. a game late like that? And it just felt like the inverse. Um, so it, it feels like a team that's going to be able to compete in Big 12 play, but you got to learn to finish if if you're going to be anything in this league. So tough one to swallow. I, and, and I will say this though: the the, the one positive uh, there, there was multiple positives, but the one yeah. that sticks out was Pop Isaacs. Yeah, because his ability to hit shots, his ability to kind of stay calm and like continue to look uh, and and not just you could just sense that he he he's much older than he really is yeah mm-hmm. you don't there, there's not much about him that says true freshman right and when he's kind of hey guys, guys calm down man let's let's chill out he's kind of you know trying to calm everybody down around him with his body language and and then he's able just to hit shots and just with no hesitation um you know i i think that you, you've got something there with him but it, the, the the problem with this team is that okay the turnovers and free throws the problem, though, is that there's only so many recipes you can come up with where they're going to have to go win a game and score enough points and do some different things. And so with that, you only have about five or six guys that I think at the end of the day you really, really trust. Uh, to, to and, and Pop would be one of those, and that he's a true freshman. Like, I don't know if you're there with Robert Jennings or Lamar or uh, DeMorian Williams, who didn't play, uh, no. Fisher didn't play. Uh, Curran Walton did get a three early in that game. But so like, there's a whole bunch of, of, of guys that I've just like, I don't know if this, what I'm going to get. So you've got right. the, you've got your five starters and maybe there's, there's an extra guy on some nights like a Lamar or Demorian Williams or, or something you know, on occasion, KJ Allen was, was pretty good. Sure. And yeah, so, a good game. It, yeah. And so with that, like three of those five guys are going to have to, they're going to have to really score for you. And mm-hmm. on a night when O'Banner just didn't have it. Not at all. Because uh, of early foul trouble. And then Bacho had had been scoring some. And he He's not feeling well. He blocked shots. He rebounded. But just a non-factor on offense. Right. It just limits what you can do when Jalen Tyson only had eight points. And, yeah, there, there's just some, some things that you just, okay, for this particular group, this is kind of what's got to happen. And, like, they have Mike Miles. You know, and like he he's he's a he's a bucket. He can get it, especially get down it. the stretch. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's kind of you'll start to see this thing play out 
when it gets tough, like who do you who do you look to? Who can bail you out? And I don't know if really we we've, we've seen that uh, emerge yet. Pop almost did. Yeah, I was about to say Pop is yeah. might be your answer there. And I think yeah. Davion Harmon is doing all he can. I mean, he yeah. he he continues to play really good defense. I just this was the other thing in that game. You were outscored by twenty two points in the paint. It was forty four to twenty two. And if you go if if you watch that game, there were so many layups and opportunities around the rim that you just couldn't finish on. And like, you just couldn't, you know, whether it was, okay, it's on the road or I feel like a shot blockers near me, or I'm just going to mm-hmm. short it, or I just, or I'm just not going to make the shot, whatever the reason, um, because TC wins this game and they only make two threes. They don't bury you from three. Sure. They just, they hammered you in the paint, which is, you know, usually what you do to people. And so that 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 was a, a sign of uh, of something that you've got to get fixed too, because Kansas, I'm telling you, I don't think there's a really a weakness on paper with the Jayhawks. Not much. Um, and it's, it's going to be tough. One final question, and uh, we'll wrap this one up. This question from Mark says, "Level do we expect, or what are your expectations for the?" Four transfer portal players next season. Are they immediate starters? It's football. Um, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, all of them except for the defensive tackle Quincy Ledet. Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't think he would be. I think he's a depth piece. I think he's an upgrade to what you had in Philip Liddy. Uh, he's older. I think that you know by all accounts the. But I think Rusty Stotts is a starting center. I think Dre McCray is starting somewhere. I wouldn't pigeonhole. I've seen people go, oh, they added th- this and they've tried to pin him in whether he's inside or outside or whatever. No, that's not. He, yeah. He's a he's a player for you. He will play somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, his playmaking and speed is absolutely going to be featured. Uh, but I, I just think he's kind of a, you know, it's like the one when they you sign as a recruit and they put ATH next to you. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, athlete, I, you know, yeah. th- that, that's what Dre McCray is. And, he's and he, really he may be. There's a chance he could step in and be the fastest guy on your team next year, right? Or in yeah, that conversation. Well, and unfortunately, that's a low bar. Okay, yeah. so so we're clear. But yes, I think he could. Uh, I think that's exactly why he's being added because you know him. He's very mature. He makes plays. Uh, I, I just, yeah, I think they will figure out different ways to to use him. Again, I'm going with Kalen Geiger 2.0. That's yeah. That's what you can only hope. And he's got a chance to actually be here for two years, not just one. Right. Uh, Rusty Stotts will start at center, and I think C.J. Baskerville probably is the starter where Muddy Waters was at that star position. Okay. So I think, yeah, uh, I, I'm really excited about what they've added via the portal, and there's more to come. They will they will tweak that as we go along here, but it's hard to, you know, it's hard to know exactly what that's going to look like until you kind of get through sorting through your current roster. Right. You know, and that and, and this could be a conversation we have after the spring as well. So that's what I'm sure. saying. It's not just in this coming days and weeks. This may be a process that goes on in May as well. Yeah, the portal ever so active. So we'll obviously have these conversations as we continue these podcasts over the next few weeks and months. And of course, we'll be talking basketball as we roll along as well. Level. Have yourself a good new year. We'll uh, we'll talk again soon. Hey, enjoyed it, man. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, should be a fun one, man. Expectations with this football program should be fun. We'll keep grinding through uh, hoops. Uh, Woodman, keep hope alive, brother. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Absolutely. That's Chris Level. I'm Choice Woodman. You've been tuned in to the Ask Level podcast, powered by Double T 97.3. You've been listening to the Ask Level podcast, powered by Double T 97.3. For more from Lubbock Sports Station, go to double T973.com.